Yeah, first of all, thanks so much for uh, having me. It's a pleasure to, to be here to speak here. Uh, and the apologies, I couldn't really uh, prepare slides because Quite all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a few hours ago that I uh, understood that. <laughs> okay. so, um, so I'm interested in, in whole brain emulation, uh, particularly uh, for quite a while now. Uh, as a computational neuroscientist, I'm interested in modeling the brain structure but also function. And, um, and I think from a technological perspective, we are, I think, pretty much there in terms of the demands that are needed in order to, to, to model and simulate a, a human scale uh, neural network and, and in a biologically realistic manner. Uh, the, the recent, uh, of course, uh, in some way, I would, I would think it's a little bit of a hype, let's say, but uh, the chat GPT and so on, we have these vast uh, models with billions of parameters. Uh, we have uh, neuromorphic um, circuits that are scalable, uh, they are very energy efficient, they are, they are also very important, they are also uh, <coughs> calibratable, so you can, you have quite a, nowadays quite a lot of freedom compared to like 15, 20 years ago when it was very difficult to, to really set those synaptic weights and, and, and other parameters. So I think, technologically speaking, it looks all very, very good. However, I think uh, one of the big challenges here is uh, with regards to the vast complexity of the brain. I mean, we have uh, almost 100 billion neurons, 10 to the 15 uh, synapses, and of course this is a, a challenge uh, when it comes to, to creating models that reflect this complexity. And then in addition, of course, other things as we have just heard before, yeah, like glial cells and, and, and then the membrane uh, properties, uh, the dynamics of those properties, it's just a huge amount of, of information and complexity. Uh, and so my, my proposition here is uh, that, um, that we should, I think, leverage the, the way that computers, uh, that nature has built uh, its computers or the brain, essentially. So rather than starting from scratch and trying to emulate or, or model a brain, I think we should start uh, in, in a genetic type of manner. So, what does that mean? We all uh, originate from a single precursor cell, the zygote. And a zygote, or the DNA, has approximately an information uh, um, content of approximately one gigabyte, or order of that. Of course, you can debate, maybe it's five gigabytes or one gigabyte or whatever. But it, it's, it's not, compared to what we, we, can, uh, we can do in terms of storage, it, it's, it's nothing. So, my proposition, and that's the approach I've been following for now more than a decade, almost 15 years uh, ago when I wrote my first paper on this topic, is to, to model how a single precursor cell generates uh, biologically realistic uh, neural tissues. Uh, and, and, and then in order, to, because ultimately this will then allow to create uh, tissues and, and entire brains that can be assessed based on experimental data on a multi-scale approach. And by multi-scale uh, approach, I mean that you can really compare with experimental data from omics uh, ex experiments, uh, immunohistochemistry, uh, physiological data, uh, you name it. Um, and, and one computational approach that is very well suited to do this kind of multi-scale models is agent-based modeling. Just out of interest, who here knows what agent-based modeling is? So almost half of it, um, which is very good. I, I spoke recently with people who had the mechanical uh, uh, computational mechanics, so not biology, but just mechanics of like, iron and uh, like materials, and, and now pretty much no one knew what agent based modeling is. So it's it's a it's a it's a multi scale approach uh, that we have been using uh, for a long time, and uh, more recently uh, I I started the, the BioAnimo collaboration in, together with uh, a number of institutes, including CERN, University of Surrey, where I'm from. Uh, I'm the spokesperson of the BioAnimo collaboration. Uh, you can uh, look it up. It's a software which is a high performance agent based software and is open source. So about two years ago we published this. It was also featured in. Uh, in nature uh, computational science uh, just after that and uh, we have uh, made this available as open source and it allows to, to model 
how neural tissues uh, develop from a single cell, uh, and we can simulate billions of uh, billions of uh, cell elements with with biodynamo. And and so my kind of vision is to to leverage biodynamo. And of course, we still need to work on biodynamo. We currently it is parallelized, but it's not distributed, so we cannot really use cloud computing at the moment. And uh, but but uh, I think we are on, the, on a very good path towards. Uh, implementing very large scale, very realistic uh, brains, uh, uh, the development of brains, and then in, 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 I would suggest that we can then include various experimental data, including also EEG, for instance, in order to fine tune those, because the developmental process will allow us to create a brain that is more or less in the right ballpark in terms of brain anatomy and physiology. And then uh, we can uh, fine tune it with further experimental data. So that's my ultimate uh, aim. Thank you, everyone. Yes, so that, that's exactly uh, the, the, for the fine tuning. The, the goal would be to to do this uh, to, to go from a common, like a standardized kind of blueprint brain towards individual people. Uh, but I think we save a lot by just creating this blueprint for a for a well matched uh, average brain anatomy and physiology, and then by inclu including personalized uh, data. Uh, the goal would be to, to fine-tune it towards the, those samples, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, I guess my question is really similar to hers, um, and, and that is uh, if you then say, okay, so we have a, a general blueprint and we have this fine-tuning thing, the fine-tuning thing needs a certain amount of data, and then the blueprint is what helps it make, less make it less complicated than maybe other methods, but is that blueprint more specific somehow and, and gives us more than say the generic blueprint that we have when we say oh we're using compartmental models or that sort of thing which is also a blueprint. Yes, very good point. I believe it, it does uh, because um, you are more constrained. If, uh, in order to generate this blueprint, if you are only allowed uh, um, rules and, and, and the developmental processes which are within biological uh, realism, like for example, we can only use certain SDP rules that are uh, supported by experimental data. We can only use biological local information exchange. So no cell uh, cell element uh, can can do anything without information that is not physically lo at uh, nearby located nearby. So these are all constraints that limit the the possible model space of, of all of them. infinitely many models, right? And, but if we can developmentally generate this blueprint, then I think we, we are much more constrained with regards also to the fine tuning because we cannot just, in addition to that, just create a, add a completely unrealistic uh, additional co developmental model, right? If that makes sense. So I, I think the, per, the, the main reason for having this developmental model is that it constrains the, the model so far that we, we can afterwards fine tune it much, much easier rather than just being a completely agnostic to it. Okay, now I want your challenge. What do you want people to solve? Yes, uh, so this is, a, I think, more like a, a management uh, question rather than a specific scientific question. Namely, how to manage it so that people can collaboratively create this uh, uh, developmental blueprint. How can one distribute it across different people? Do you want to write it? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Awesome.